Like half the association shown up. We appreciate it, gentlemen. Ballard, we're gonna win this fight. Thank you. Good luck to you, Ballard. Cutting Carrie Sarton off from water. You just bought that track to spot him. Hey, hey, Morgan. Pete. All of you. You didn't need it. Hope it makes you feel good. You saying a man can't buy land when he wants to? I'm saying Carrie's hard working. I think you've gone a little bit too far this time, Ballard. Oh, now come on, Shelby. Let's be friends, huh? Nobody wants that old rock garden to use anyway. Be friends. <laughs> Kermit Delver, get out of here. Uh, excuse me, On a sweet Sunday when I ought to be home resting my poor old bones and you making a fuss over a petition for statehood, where'd you get this idea? Oh, it's from Cheyenne, all official, Henry. Who says it's official? Judge Wilkins seen it. Not good enough for you. There's a delegation coming in from Washington in a month to make Cheyenne the capital city. <laughs> Look who signed up, Slater. Hunter Jarvis. And it's big and bold, like a John That's Hancock or like something. Sideways on alcohol. Now, you suppose he just forgot the good turn we done him when he got flooded out last spring and the bank said no? Uh-huh. Uh, Hunter, I need to remind you of something, Hunter. Hunter has gone. Oh, he probably heard I was going to come and reason with him. What do you think about that, Ollie? Looked like a $3 bill to me, Mr. Ballard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Merle, how about you? You're a smart young man with a future. Where do you stand? State it ain't worth fussing over. Of course, let me help you. Thank you. Is that so? It's going to happen. No matter what. Next year, five years from now, I wouldn't waste your sweet Sunday worrying about it. Wait it out is my thought. And the vermin will sweep in like a grass fire. The only people I see around here are hardworking. High sores and riffraff. You talking about me? What do you say, Cor? Do I look like an eyesore? No, sir. -y. You're a handsome man and my sweetheart forever. <laughs> Smart little lady. Honey Cage is waiting for us. We gotta get moving. Hey, you're a horse trader. You pull your weight in town unlike some other folks. But I don't need no strangers from Cheyenne. Come in, tell me who I got to neighbor with, where to put my road, my fence, tell me what's mine and what ain't. I found it, Rollins. I made it. I thought Indian traders and trappers come here first. <laughs> I put my roots and my law down here, boy, when you were still just a pup. I got a wife and two sons in the ground. 
Now, you're being new to the territory. Maybe you ought to plant your feet and take a stand. Well, to say the truth, I wasn't going to sign the petition for statehood. I didn't think it was that important. But since you put my character to the test, do you hand me that paper you got there, Kermit, and a pencil? Sure. Here you go. I'm a free man like you, Ballard. I can say yes, and I can say no. I say yes to statehood. Horses from you, boy. From now on, maybe you ought to try to sell them in Cheyenne. If you can get there. Doesn't matter one way or the other where I sell them, Mr. Ballard. I give you the same fair price I give everybody. Now, if you've got some other stand you'd like me to take, I'd be more than glad to accommodate you. Let's go, Merle. Will you please? Let's go. Good afternoon. Thanks, Merle. You didn't sell no horses today. I said what was true. You don't always have to say what's true. I'll do better at the auction in Casper. That man's sure got a bug up his twirl. He's running for something, isn't he? He showed him up in front of town. He ain't gonna forget that. Ah, uh, he'll get over it. Come on, boy. Hop, hop, hop. Come on. Right over here. Feel. That's the way it is with the horse trade cage. You grow to love the animals you raise, but there comes a time when you gotta sell them. You need cash to run the farm, pay wages, you know? That's the way it is. You got it. That's the way it is. But be happy with what you and Billy did. These are beautiful stallions, beautiful horse flesh. They're gonna make Clay Williams happy and we're gonna earn a profit to buy the land we need. You see that dog? You wash him, I'll sell him too. Safe trip. Be back in a few weeks, sooner if the weather holds. <laughs> Take care of your mama, Kate. Sure, Pa. Surprise me with a present, Burl. Like what? Oh, like, uh... Uh, some nice soap, uh, maybe something sweet, and, uh, oh, uh, a bicycle! And, and some of those fancy bloomers from the Sears Roebuck catalog! And, uh, an Otis elephant, like they have at the World Fair in Paris! Oh, and don't forget lamp oil! What? Don't forget lamp oil! <laughs> Otis elevator! Come on now, step up, step up now! Grab me a bed. Come on now, step up. Here we go. Step up now. Come on. Right on through. Come on now, step up. Figure that, bro. Come Good looking fence you got, Slater. What's it for? Keep rustlers out, mister. I didn't know Ballard on this land. I just bought a new parcel. It's all official. Papers and all. Cost you $10 to come through. 
ten dollars? <laughs> yes, sir. This pass is closed, Mr. Rating. You ought not go too far, Ballard. How's that? Putting up a fence and charging? Well, thrusters like to slip in, pick off strays. I get the fence all right, but what about the ten dollars? Keeps the riffraff out. You're making trouble is all. Look, I got no cause with you horse traders. You come and go as you like. <clears throat> Where are you headed? Casper for the auction. Mind if I uh, take a look at what you got? Looking's free. How much for these blacks? They're sold. <laughs> little knot-headed, but put a pistol to my head, I'd give you 50 each. What do you think, Ollie? We need workhorses. Yeah, we do, and since you ain't heard the new rules till now, I'd be willing to let you come and go two, no, three times for one of them blacks. No sale. Then it'll cost you $10 to pass, pay Slater. I ain't got $10 to give because I got to pay for food and lodging in Casper. And go around. I go around and the auction's over before I get there. That ain't my doing. $10. Oh, I near forgot. You gonna need a permit. You gotta have one, gotta be old fishing. I must have crossed here 50 times without a permit. Where am I supposed to get a permit? Well, you can see Judge Wilkins and Rollins are, you could uh, get one in Casper. Yeah, uh, Elmo Whitaker in Casper, he'll write you one up. You know Elmo, don't you? <laughs> Give you five now and the rest when I come back, good enough? How we know you're coming back this way? Because I said I would. Maybe the horse dealer can put up some security. Hmm. Now, that is a good thought, Ollie. You know, uh, I try to be a reasonable man. I'll go along with you. Just leave the two blacks and pick them up on your way back. Take it or leave it. I ain't got all day. Billy, cut the blacks off the string and leave them. Don't leave the stallions here, Merle. Well, you put up the roans if you have to. The blacks has promised to Clay Williams. Leave them. I'll go the long way around. That was good. All right. Don't do it, Merle. I ain't got no choice. I ain't got the money. The auction's in a week. You stay with him, Billy. We'll pick you up on the way back. I ain't feeding no crow. I oh, you got to sleep in the barn. Take what you need from the pack horse. Been a real pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Eddins. Let them through, Slater. Son of a bitch. Hey, come on now. Let's turn this thing over and get this out of the way. Mr. Eddins got to come through. Too far. Pretty soon we'll be going around the Rio Grande to get to Casper. I mean, if he thinks. Hey, Merle? What? You know, there ain't no use paying attention to that old man. We make all this. Like a church with no roof. We got the Almighty bragging his head off. Yeah. What do you figure he's saying? Remember who did this? Don't get too big for your britches, I guess. Fair enough. Howdy, Browder. See Elmo Whitaker? He's over there somewhere. Oh, he said, Woody. Good to see you. Good to see you. There you go. There it is. Hey. Yes, indeed. Yes. Where's the stallions? Henry Ballard got them. I thought Merle promised him to Clay Williams. Yeah, well, Ballard's holding on to his security until Merle pays him a toll for crossing his property. I heard about that, Gate. That was crazy trying something like that. Yeah. Merle's pretty angry about it. Don't blame him. Hey, Brad, are you? <laughs> you ever hear tell of one of them English dogs, one of them Jack Russell Terrier dogs? 
Can't say I have. Well, they say if and you get them riled up enough and they sink their teeth into you, well, now you're just going to have to saw their jaw apart before they let go. Well, that right there is Merrill Redden right about now. The man with a bull head and a Jack Russell jaw. <laughs> Quite a sight. Mm. I'll see you, partner. Come on, See you son. later. I told you to see me. That's what he said. <laughs> He's fucking the dog on you, Merle. Ain't no such thing as a pass for a pass. He owns the land all right. He's been buying land like it's going out of style, but I don't know what this permit crap is all about. Including that parcel around the pass? Oh, yeah. And he can do what he wants with the land? Unless the governor steps in, but that's a long wiggle down the road. How's business, Elmo? Pretty good. You're cheating the hell out of him, are you? <laughs> Only then the trust that cheats me. Take care. One hundred, two hundred, and fifty. That's it, and I got mine. Okay. What'll I tell Clay Williams? Tell him I'll be back in the spring. I'll have the horses for him if he still wants them. He still wants them, all right. Tell him I mean to keep my word. All right. Pleasure doing business with you. Have a safe trip. Take care, Woody. Prouder. Prouder. That you are bidding against your husband. My books in the stir, my bridle in my hand. Goodbye, old team. I'm, I'm leaving Cheyenne. Goodbye, old paint. <laughs> I'm leaving Cheyenne. Slater, I'm coming to the horses, Slater. You owe me $5. Pay him. Billy! Billy! Where are they? They're around. Billy! They ain't in here, Slater! I said they're around. Woody, check the corral. <laughs> Billy! Easy now, easy. <laughs> easy now, boy. Bastards. Easy now, boy, easy. Easy, easy. Now. It's okay, it's all right. It's okay, it's all right. It's all right. Easy now, boy. Easy now, boy. Easy now, boy. It's okay. It's okay. Slater! Come out here, boy. I want to talk to you. Those are not my horses. What did you do to my horses? No! Oh! Hey. What'd you do to my horses? I didn't do nothing. Why don't you ask your crawl? I will when I find him. Where is he? Oh, Jesus, I don't know. He was making trouble. I saw his sores on him, tied to a big stuff. Because your crow took off. I can't take care of him by myself. You've been working him in the field, Slater. What's the trouble here? Listen, I should have put the dogs on him, boss. What did you do to my animals? Uh, he's bitching about me working his horses too much. He says they ain't hit. Maybe he wants you to buy. I wouldn't sell you a coyote. Did you get his $5? Yeah, he's paid up. Then get your horses and get. I can't move them because they can't walk and I ain't gonna injure them anymore. I left you with well-fed and healthy horses, Ballard, and I want them back that way. Them is all you gonna get. These are not my horses! I don't even recognize them! <laughs> you got two weeks to put him back into condition. Two weeks, two years. I ain't gonna condition nothing. Two weeks, old man. You got something you want to say to me? Yeah, I'm tired of your statehood and mouth. And your spitting image, Ballard, healthy and fat. Get Whoa! Now, where's Billy? 
He's inside. Where is he? He's in the kitchen. Billy. Oh, sorry about the horses. What happened? Slater. Slater run me off. Why? As long as I was there, he couldn't work the blacks to death. Yeah, I told him they were young and, and they'd never been in harness. He, he tied them to a pigsty in the mud. He wouldn't take the harness off. After a week, they were filthy. And one day I came out and he had them hooked up to a log pool. Come on now! Come on now! Come on now! Then that old Slater and Ollie, uh. they beat me. Then they set them dogs on me. Get him! Get him! Get him! They might have killed me if I had went back there. You did right, Levin. Why don't you let Billy eat? How to kill him. Boy. What? Why don't you let Billy eat? Yeah. Rest easy. What are you going to do? Get my horses back the way I left them. And damages for Billy. Ballard ain't going to do that because you tell him to and pay Billy to boot. He'd be the laughing stock of Rollins. You're setting yourself up for a fall, Merle. Ballard ain't going to do what you want him to. He just won't. Yes, he will. You got chores to do, boy? Yes, sir. Then get to him. I don't know, Merle. Ballard's got a lot of friends. I want to know what the law says I can do. Well, you could sue him. Then I want to sue him. It's not as simple as that. Why not? Well, you got to figure out things like how much it's going to cost you. Can you win? I don't care what it costs. Merle, you go up against Ballard in this town, you're gonna go through Judge Wilkins. Now, Wilkins got shares in Ballard's Cattle Association. I want my horses back in the condition I left them, and damages for Billy. Do you want to handle it? Jesus, Merle. You're asking Wilkins to rule for you against Ballard and an Indian against a white man? I believe that God is to man as man is to animal. You treat him with respect. You set dogs on a man. You pay for it. Now, the law upholds these ideas, and I mean to see the law has its day. Do you want to handle it? I'm trying to tell you something here, if you'll listen. You're wasting your money. Yes or no? I'll file if you want me to file. Cost you $20 in advance. $20? In advance. Half now and the rest when I see what you come up with. Now you file it. Sure. Two boxes, here we go, Mom. <laughs> Good having you back. Hmm. I think you paid up last time, so we're gonna start fresh. Okay. Mr. Redding, you got two swaybacks thinking up Mr. Ballard's state. I appreciate it if you pick them up real soon, you hear? Otherwise, we are liking to chop them up for slop or something. <laughs> All right, Slater, you want to take it on back to the room? Kermit, next time Ballard or one of his fools comes in, tell him the law will take care of Ballard. And if the law don't take care of him, I'm gonna take care of him. One way or the other, there's gonna be justice. I will have it. 
Ballard himself is gonna feed and groom my stallions, make them shiny and beautiful, just like I left them. Now, no matter what it costs me, that's gonna happen. Sure as sunshine. Will you tell Mr. Ballard that if you see him? <laughs> <laughs> Hear me, I speak the truth. And poker as usual at my place Tuesday night. I appreciate the help, Judge. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, uh, Judge! Judge Wilkins, I was just coming up to see you. I uh, don't have time for you today, Rayborn. Come around next week. <laughs> uh, we're, we're waiting on your decision, Judge. It's been a couple of weeks now. It's been a couple of weeks now, Judge. My client's getting awful nervous about this. Sit down, Rayborn. You make me nervous. Yes, sir, Judge. I'm just waiting for your decision, Judge. I, uh, I hope the petition was in proper legal form, the way a justice of your integrity is used to seeing. Nothing special. It was okay. Mm -hmm. You talked this petition over with Reddy? Yes, sir. Seems like a pissy ant fuss to me. Redding wants to find a suitor, is that your idea? Oh, well, no, I give him counsel to the contrary, Judge. His mind's made up. Tell him to take his horses home and forget it. Well, you see, my client views them as prize stallions, Judge. Prize is in the mind, Counselor. Huh. Dollar don't want them, so what's Redding gonna do? Leave them there? Well, it's like the charge says. I know what the charges say. Yes, sir. Foolishness, prideful foolishness is what this is. If I was you, I'd talk sense into him. I got five towns to cover, Counselor, and you bring me this, I don't have time for a hearing. Fifty dollars for Billy Redwood, a crow? Jesus H. Yeah, well, I give him honest, realistic counsel on that. You do? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He wants it filed. I just, I'm just wondering when you want a hearing, that's all. But, well, you don't have to decide right now, just when you get a chance. Ain't gonna be one. I'm throwing a case out, lack of evidence. I advise you to tell Redding to pick up his horses and get on with his life. Yes, sir, Judge. And I advise you to pick your clients more carefully if you want to do business in this town. Yes, sir. You're hauling shit up a mountain, Rayborn. Carefully, don't spill on you. Shit up a mountain. Thank you, sir. Jim Burrow, word is Ballard's still working them horses out in the field. Where'd you hear that? Mac Turnage come in through Casper. Thought they were Thought they were yours. Maybe not, though. Just take them over to put them back into shape. Uh -huh. Well, there ain't nothing more I can do, Merle. Except, maybe, uh, Billy? Leave the room, would you? I want to say something bright. Anything you got to say to me, you can say in front of Billy. Well, the word I get is Ballard wants to do business with you. He wants to settle with you on the horses, but he won't pay Billy. Why not? Well, Billy gave him trouble and run off. Billy didn't run off. Ballard's fools run him off. The suit stands away, it's red. Well... Then he won't settle with you. It's gonna be a standoff. Not to my mind. Well, what else are you gonna do? Run out of tax. Okay, you want more stew? Please. Are we ever gonna get horses back? I don't know, Cage. Now you sleep tight. You let me worry about it. I'm going to Cheyenne to see the governor before any of this happens, you know, or whoever runs the law. And if that don't work, I'm thinking about it. Doing it all over again, ain't you? Don't you know me? No, there's no way I can let a man do what that man did. That it's not possible. I know you. If people are going to kick me, I'd rather be a dog than a man, Cora. So if justice is to be done, don't deny me the freedom I need to get it. No. This is not just about you and what you think is right. I'm a part of you, and so is Cage. We just get thrown in? Is that it? Cora, please, keep your voice down. Cage is listening. I'm not saying you shouldn't go after Ballard, but... 
You're doing exactly what he wants you to do. To scare people away. Let me try something, Merle. My way. If, if it don't work, then, then you do what you have to do. I'll stand with you no matter what. What are you talking about, Cora? You know I'm better at politics than you are. Let me go to Cheyenne Forest. No, I know the Attorney General's wife, Judith Metcalf. I met her at the statehood rally last year in Casper. I spent the whole afternoon with her. She'll get the petition to her husband. That'll be the end of it. You get the horses back the way you want them and something for Billy. Cora, this is not your fight. It is my fight. It's my family. Look out that window. If you don't stay here and fix the barn, we're going to be living hand to mouth before you know it. I've been praying for a miracle so there'd be peace between Ballard and me, but nothing comes back. No answers, no ways to go, nothing. I'm your miracle. I'm what you prayed for. What sort of woman is she, Attorney General's wife? She's a fine woman. Her husband? Mm, I'm sure her husband is fair. I don't know, Cor, what you're asking. Truth is, I got a terrible fear. You go off chasing Ballard, I'll never see you again. You're getting sassy with your old man is what I'm hearing. You better watch that. So it's all decided. I'll be back in two weeks. I'll take Winnie with me. I'll see the Attorney General, and I'll get the lamp all you always forget. Two weeks is a long time. Mm, nothing like a little separation to make the heart grow fonder. Also, I'm smarter than you when it comes to politicking. D or did I say that? Yeah, I think you mentioned that one. Do send Woody back. I need him for the roofing. Wouldn't be jealous, would you? No. Mm. Better come back, hurry up. Who's my man? Get down off of there, son. Cage, kiss your yeah. mother. Get off there. Cage, go on now. Get out of here. Go on now. You're working on that barn. Original documents in the case. Excuse me a moment, Mr. Crawford. You're next. Now, okay, I will take these under consideration for the Attorney General. You are Mr. Wakefield, is that correct? Mr. Wakefield, okay. Well, you might want to take a seat. We'll get you some of the Look, but he started to he started to go off to the one side as we were coming up over the last hill to the first time. I think we gotta go visit an old neighbor of ours. Mr. Metcalf, please. You have an appointment? No, I don't. All these folks have appointments, ma'am. You need to ride ahead so we can give you time. Mrs. Lipton, you're next. I come from Rawlins to see Mr. Metcalf. Do you, do you think you could make an exception in my case? This week is out of the question. He's across town with the statehood people. Judith Metcalf said any time I was in Cheyenne to come look her up. 
I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. My name is Cora Redding from Rollins. My husband is Merle Redding, the horse dealer. Maybe you know him. No, ma'am, I surely don't. Well, Mrs. Metcalf does, and she would want to know that I'm in Cheyenne, so... Could you please see that she gets this? I'm staying at the Wainwright Hotel. It's important that she get this message. Thank you, Captain. No end of them. Yes. Okay. Boy, we rubbed that up along the way, didn't we? You okay there, Haas? here to see the attorney general. Oh, so I am the attorney general. She come here. She give you this. That's all right. Okay. Crazy bastards out there. Okay. It hurts awful. Oh, I know. I know. I'm sorry. I left you down, Cora. I'm so sorry. Now, this petition doesn't belong here. It's not the sound of Wilkins, Judge Wilkins, and Rollins. Yes, sir. Private. Yes, sir. Get that in the pouch to Rollins. I swear your mother clock's better than Union Pacific, Cage. I wasn't there for her. I'm so sorry. I should never have left her. It's all right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you are looking for trouble. <laughs>
be, be praised, my Lord, for those who forgive through your love and bear sickness and tribulation. Blessed are those who endure in peace, for they will be crowned by you, Most High. Be praised, my Lord, for our sister bodily death, from whom no living thing can escape. Blessed are those whom she finds doing your holy will. For the second death cannot harm them. Annie up. Nickel Annie, Mr. Ballot. Five card draw. <laughs> Damn, what happened, Dolly? <laughs> Woody started. He said I smelled like pig slop. I stroked him a good one. Oh, it would have pleasured me to been here to see that. Yes, sir. You take my advice. You stay clear of Reading. City's own woman to Cheyenne to beg for. Yeah. What kind of man do a thing like that? Keep buying as we've been doing, and next year there'll be nothing but pasture from here to land. No way they can stop us, even with statehood. Quarter you, Mr. Ballard. Keep the land rolling in. That's the ticket. Calm everybody down. That means you, Ollie. You and Slater. Good things are happening. We don't need trouble. Uh, is that a quarter to me or to the judge? Give a quarter to you. A quarter to you, judge. Give me another one. Sell out? Maybe. After all you put into it. Well, yeah, I'm interested, Merle. I'd be a fool not to, but I gotta, I gotta think about it. You come on me all of a sudden. The whole lot. But you've seen it, so you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know it's prime, all right. The whole lot. Give me a hand. All right, Hattie. You're serious? I got Rayburn working up the papers now. You've been a good neighbor, Shelby. I want to give you first crack. You talking the whole spread? And what's on it? Well, I gotta tell you up front. I don't have meat for all them horses. No, no, the horses ain't part of the deal. I got plans for the horses. So what we're talking is the price of the land. And what's on it? I come up with three dollars an acre. Three dollars an acre? That's a fair price, bro. You bet you that's awful good, as long as you understand. Cash on signing. Why are you doing this, bro? I mean, you got water. You got one of the finest tracts of land in Rollins. I mean, if it's all because of Ballard, hell. I mean, that land is your future. There are bigger things than land. Well, I hope you have. You want a cup of coffee? That'd be nice. Hello, Mr. Rayburn. Cage. <clears throat> what did he say? Well, Attorney General sent your petition back. I mean, he's awful sorry about court and everything, but he had to turn you down. He says it's a local matter, and it's up to Judge Wilkins to decide. Huh? <clears throat> That's the law, mm -hmm. see, and he's got to obey it, just like you. What are you telling me? Well, uh, Wilkins already ruled, so that's it. <clears throat> I, uh, I put in a lot of time on this, Merle. Have you? 
you know. How much do I owe you? 25. Bless what you already owe. Ah, oh, boys. That's all I got. I'll give you the rest later. <clears throat> I won't be needing you anymore. I'm awful sorry about what happened to Cora. That's an awful thing to happen. Just awful. Whole town's upset about it. If there's anything I can do, just... I wrote something I want you to read. Tell me what you think. I'm Merle Redden. By authority and born in me as a free man. A free man living in a free territory. Demand that Henry Ballard, within seven days of receiving this note, bring to my stables the horses he took from me. Groom and fatten them with your own hands to the condition I left them, and to injuries caused to Billy Redwood, who did nothing to you, pay him $50. It is signed Merle Redding, owner of the horses. Let the law take care of it, Merle. There's no way Ballard's gonna do what you tell him to do just because you say so. Yes, he will. And if he don't, I got plans to convince him. Anyone want to hear the particulars, come to my spread at sundown and I'll spell it out for you. I hold no man responsible for the death of my wife but me. I let her go. And I got to live with that the rest of my life. Judge Wilkins, in a town where there's no law, a man is obliged to make his own. Isn't that the way it works around here? Wouldn't you say, Judge Wilkins? Seven days. <laughs> Notice the law on you. You got seven days to read it and answer. Seven days, and I'm coming for you. Deposit the rest of the money in your name in the bank in Casper. If I need any, I'll come to you. But remember, it's your money. Why can't I just go with you? Well, I need you to stay here with Mr. and Mrs. Dyke so I don't worry. I don't want us to go with you, Dick. It's your job now to hold down the fort until I get back. I mean, somebody's got to take care of the spread. Now, that's a big responsibility, do you understand? Sure. Cage, do you understand? Well, but all I want is to help you. I know. I know. Hell, we all know it. Ballard's gone too far. Yes, he has. Putting up a toll gate, deciding who's to pay and who ain't. Yeah, and if he can get away with what he done to Merle, he can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. It's time we all woke up. I know you're all real busy, so we'll get right to the point. I'm inviting you to ride with me against Henry Ballard. No. What, what Ballard did to Billy and your horse to show was bad. Now, I like to help, but this ain't my quarrel. You're right, Dewey. It ain't your quarrel. There'll come a time, and this toll gate is just the start of things, when Ballard decides to box you in some more. Maybe take some of your land. Or cut you off from water like he did Carrie Sarton. That's right. Then you'll come and say, look here, Merle. Look what Ballard's doing. I need your support. And I could say to you, Dewey, it ain't my quarrel. I run a horse farm. I live over there. 
two hour ride. Mm -hmm. But until statehood comes along, all we got is Ballard's Law. That's, That's right. right. And there's no future in it. And I did not come 1,500 miles to tolerate that. I ain't looking for a shootout. Well, neither is Merle. That's right. Overpowering them with numbers, that's the idea. Scare them into doing right. Folks like you and me coming after them. No bloodshed. What if he runs? Let him. We'll follow till we find him. Yeah, I'm right. How long will it take, Merle? Maybe a day, maybe two, maybe longer. I don't care. I'll provide the horses and grub, as long as it takes. It takes money, Merle. My spread's for sale. Shelby and I worked out a deal. Every man jack of you gets $15 a month for as long as it takes to bring that man in alive and working in these stables. Merle means business. I'm for it. I'm sick of Ballard beating us. I know men are right against him. Bring him along. Now, if you don't want to go, it's OK with me. I'm going after Ballard anyway. And if you don't want to go on principle, and go for money because I pay cash on the barrel head. He ain't coming. Who's he gonna come with? Well, he's got Woody. And an engine. <laughs> <laughs> he shows he goes home in a pine box. Slater and Ollie? They high tailed it. <laughs> Any man who treats an animal that way, he don't deserve a stable, wouldn't you say, Billy? Get the other animals out and burn it.
That'll do. Meryl. Ballard's keep. Ma'am, where's Ballard? I don't know. Because of what your boss did, my law's now the law. If you hide him or help him in any way, I'll burn you out. Do you understand? Whatever's done, men did. Where's he going? I don't know. Don't lie. Maybe headed for Cheyenne. That's a long haul. He's got to stop somewhere, doesn't he? Please don't burn me out. I've got nowhere else to go. Maybe headed for Medicine Bow. Medicine Bow. Who does he know in Medicine Bow? Cobb Weller, his brother-in-law, owns a feed store there. We leave for Medicine Bow tonight. Off my property, Redding. Check inside. We ain't been introduced. How come you know my name? I don't want no trouble. You've been hiding a fugitive. That's a crime according to my law. Where is he? Gone. Where did he go? I got nothing to do with your grudge against Henry. Where and when did he go? Come on. While you're thinking about it, Billy, light me some fire. I'll ask you one more time. Where and when did he go? You get the hell off my property, Redding. Back where you come from. You ride with Crow. If I knew where it was, I'd hide him. To spite you! Would you? Burn him. for a man named Henry Ballard, you know him? Is there a printer around? I got a job for him, I pay cash. Pardon me, ma'am. Miss? You a printer? Yes, sir. I do print. This is what I need printed, 200 copies. How much? $10. I'll give you 15. I need it right away. I'll see what I can do. Big, as big as you can make it. Yes, sir. Yes, that's what I do. Big, always. As I said before, I'm looking for a man named Henry Ballard who cheated me out of my horses, injured him bad, and beat up my man. If you hide him, or help him in any way, I'll burn you out. I, Merle Redding, by authority inborn in me, as a free man living in a free territory, 
demand that Henry Ballard, within seven days of receiving this notice, bring to my stables the horses he took from me. Groom and fatten them with your own hands in my stables. Man, let's mount up. You better leave some men at Redding's place, Sheriff. Ballard ain't going there. He went to his brother-in-law's house. It's Redding finds Henry. He's sure as hell coming back. Maybe, but I ain't split my men. I need all I got. You expect me to get Redding? Let's go, men. Terrible situation, Judge. I try to control it as best I could. Just no turning him. You know, he tried to pay me for my work. I wouldn't take his money. You know, there's a funny smell around here. Governor, I think you should look at this. Henry Ballard. Mm hmm Where is he? And he was at the Wainwright Hotel. He keeps moving. We're already. He's outside of town somewhere. Clear him out. I can't. I've got a hundred men on escort duty. So go with what you've got. Now, what I've got is ten men, sir. Redding's got 40, 50 guns and crow. Every out of work drifter in Cheyenne is signing on with him, so I need at least a company. Great. Just what we need with a statehood delegation coming in from Washington. What's the Attorney General doing in all this? Mr. Metcalf sent Redding's petition back to Judge Wilkins. And? Well, uh, <laughs> Wilkins kind of works for Ballard, is what it comes down to, sir. He's got shares in his association. I hear this is what caused the trouble. Ballard don't sing our song on statehood. I don't care where he stands. He's entitled to protection until the matter's cleared up. Tell Metcalf I want to see him on Redding's petition. Yes, sir. It's a mess. When do your troops get back? Two, three days. Find Ballard. Tell him we can't guarantee his safety. Tell him he's on his own. Tell him for his own good he ought to leave Cheyenne. <laughs> is there anything you can do to calm things down? But the only way to calm Redding down is to shoot him down. Follow the sheriff. Let me know where he camps. Wake up, Sheriff. Strip him. Now quit, Merle. You're going too far. Far enough when I get satisfaction, Sheriff. No animal's worth what you're doing. In your opinion. Well, you're going to jail for torching Ballard's bread. As long as he's in there with me. You'll get this back as soon as I find him. Do you remember me, coward? Remember me! Oh, damn! 
you stinking savage. Hey! You all seen what happened. Slater drew first, and he was gonna shoot Billy in the back. You all seen it, right, Sheriff? Slater moved, but Billy had the upper hand. Slater drew first. Right? Slater moved first. You all heard the Sheriff. Don't forget what he said. Holly, Holly, listen to me. You gotta get to Judge Wilkins. Tell him that Redding shot Slater and he burned down Ballard's barn. Tell him to file charges. Go on, go on, get going. I know when the statehood delegation arrives, we will all show them the hospitality and friendliness that Wyoming people are known for. We are not separate ranchers, farmers, and settlers of the Wyoming Territory, but united today as citizens of the future great state of Wyoming. Yeah! Where's Valley? Our Valley's still holed up in the hotel, sir. Refuses to leave town. Do I have that correct, Colonel? Yes, I posted two soldiers with him. That's the best I could do. It's just a matter of time before Redding finds him. This is going too far. Jail him. Who? Thanks for your support. Appreciate Jail who, it. Governor? Ballard. On what charges? Any charge you want. Any charge you'll agree to. Disturbing the peace. See if he'll buy it. He wants protection. <laughs> Jail is the safest place for him. Thank you. Colonel Fine Redding is telling if he quits going after Ballard, the Attorney General will reopen his case. I don't know, Governor. People are upset. The delegation arrives in two days. I want the streets clear. Yes, sir. Amnesty for what Redding's done. If he quits going after Ballard, put it on paper. Colonel, find him and give it to him. This is nonsense. The statehood of Wyoming will not be held up by a piss fight over two horses and a crow Indian. Understand me? I want this settled now. You understand? Governor? Let's get a picture. You know the ladies. Yes, I do. All right, smile, everybody. Yeah. Oh, oh, great. Thank, Thank you for coming, everyone. Appreciate Let's go eat. Billy. Billy, come with me. What are you going around? Catch up later! It's 
It's getting so I don't recognize none of these guys anymore. Should have known you draw fire coming in out of nowhere. It was wrong to kill Slater for what he did to us. And I still can't believe Gore's dead, Billy. I keep hoping a miracle will happen and she'll come back to life. Forgive me for letting her go. I'm coming after you anyway, old man. I'm coming. What day do you suppose it is? I don't know. The governor wants to make a deal. I'm listening. You lay down your arms, come in peaceably. He'll reopen your case against Ballard. You do this, and we'll drop all charges against you. Where's Ballard? He's going to jail for disturbing the peace. Maybe your boss don't read too good. I don't want him in jail. I want him working in my stables. Now, that's something I can't negotiate. Governor promises a hearing right away. And if I say no? Well, then I go after you with the army, and you lose. Billy's part of this. I got to talk it over with him. They say they'll drop the charges if we come in. I don't trust them. That's what they say. Rivers are not to be trusted. Neither are white men's armies. It's a trick. Maybe. You decide for you. I'll decide for me. Take care, my brother. We'll see each other again, just not on this road. Goodbye, little brother. Goodbye, Billy. Goodbye. The Honorable Joe B. Tolliver presiding. <laughs> Judge, it is a real Mr. honor. Mr. Ballard, this is a legal hearing, and you will get your chance to be heard when you are addressed. Be seated. Redding and Ballard, remain standing. Everybody take your seats. Raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, 
the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please be seated. Are all the parties in this dispute here? Oh, but Billy Redwood. Where's Billy Redwood? He left Cheyenne, Your Honor. He refused the offer of amnesty. Murdering bastard. Keep your mouth shut or I will have you jailed for contempt. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this in two hours or less of my time. Now, Mr. Redding, this is your petition. Do you wish to change any of it? Is that the one for my wife? Yes. No. Will you accept cash for the horses? No. I accept what the words say. Since Billy Redwood has refused amnesty, you may drop him from this petition. The suit stands away. It's writ, Judge. So be it. Mr. Ballard, let's start with you. What's your side of this mess? Well, Your Honor, this uh, troublemaker Redden come on my land on his way to Casper to sell some horses. And I made a neighborly offer that he could pass, pay me $10. Well, he had a near fit. Said he didn't have no $10. Now, still trying to be helpful. I told him. Sir? I can understand you from over there. Uh, that he'd just leave two of his animals. When he came back, he could pay me, pick them up. It'd be all right. Uh, and he left me uh, two sway back old bones. You know, and when he did come to get them, he said, these are not my horses. I said, of course they are. He cursed me and left. Now, that's all there was to it. You can ask Ollie, because he was right there. And poor old Slater. Slater ain't part of this hearing, Bally. Now, even before we hear Redding's side of the story, I got to tell you, I don't believe the part about the two swayback old bones. Oh, but that's what there was. Ain't no dealer I know would travel 100 miles, sell a $5 nag. I know horse play. So do I. Now. <clears throat> you put up a toll gate on your property? It's my land. Did Redding know it cost him $10 for the crossing? Whether he did or not, it's nothing to me. You charge everybody the same $10 to come and go? You bet. You're under oath, Mr. Ballard. Some do and some don't, is that it? Well, I am a cattle rancher. I have Judge Wilkins over in Rollins just filed two counts of murder and one count of insurrection against Merle Reddy. What? Anything you want on your property, including a damn toll gate. Excuse me, gentlemen. Would you take it outside of my courtroom, please? Sorry, Judge. Apologies. Thank you. Although putting up a toll gate to my mind is a hostile act. And if it happened to me in my travels, you would feel the lash of my tongue. He says the governor didn't have the power to grant amnesty for murder. Murder? What murder? A rancher's wife named Daisy Mathis, one of Ballard's men, Slater Morrison. What's relevant here is the law. I judge cases on law. Law's the king with me, because if it wasn't, this territory, even if it becomes a state, wouldn't be fit for a prairie dog. <clears throat> now, Redding, what's your story? He's lying. Uh, hold it. Hold it. Order in this courtroom. Please take your seats. Continue. Wilkins claims Redding shot them both and burned down Ballard's barn. He says all this happened before the amnesty agreement. Before the amnesty? God damn, we didn't know anything about any shootings. No. Does the governor know about this? I thought I should tell you first. We need to figure out how best to take this to the governor. Come in peaceably, and all charges will be dropped. Who wrote this? You? No, sir. I did, sir. You did. What the hell's he doing writing a legal document? Well, that's the way it, it just worked out, sir. He doesn't know the first damn thing about law, much less amnesty. Francis, I've been attending the statehood delegate. You are the attorney general. And you allowed this, this, him to write an amnesty agreement. Sir, there was no one else. If I did not do it, it was not going to get done. So do you I realize the position you've put me in, Hoyt? I am on public record for giving murder. We were unaware of that at the time, sir. When did these murders happen? As near as we can figure, sir, a couple of days before Redding's amnesty. So, we covered him. Is that what you're saying? Well, that's a legal question. A, a if a legal mind had prepared the amnesty, we wouldn't be in a legal mess. You're right, sir. This is all your fault, Hoyt. Get Judge Tolliver. Well, he's in court right now. I would not advise bothering Judge Tolliver right now, sir. Get him anyway! Now! Yes, sir. And them horses were promised to me. I went to Casper to pick him up. 
but was told that Merle didn't bring them. That surprised me. Merle, he don't do business that way. Merle gives you his word, and that's it. What, in your judgment, was the value of these horses? Well, they was matched stallions, Your Honor. I was willing to pay $200 each for them. You ever seen them before? Yeah, when they was yearlings. You're dismissed. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Anyone else have an opinion in this matter? Anyone? All right, Mr. Redding, you will have a guard with you at all times until this case is over. I don't need a guard, Your Honor. These angry people all over Cheyenne about this business. You can either have a guard or you can share a cell with Mr. Ballard. It's up to you. I'll take the guard. Hearing is adjourned. That's everything, Mr. Van Wee. You're all set. Good. Well, you can't. Two weeks already. I can't stand here, John. You know, all this is over two horses. Two horses, and, and I think three, maybe four people dead. Oh, now this is madness, excuse me. And this man Redding was threatening to burn down the Wainwright Hotel. This place is not ready to be a state. I can tell you that right now. Well, we can talk all night long, but the people want something done. Something will be done, Conrad, but it's gotta be according to the law. The question is, can Redding's amnesty be revoked? He signed an executive agreement forgiving a man for something he'd already done, and he put a date on it. I gave my word to honor it. But if Redding violates the terms of his amnesty, you can revoke it and try him for murder. But you've got to do it legal. If he doesn't violate his amnesty, you got a problem. You got to prove in court what you knew when it was granted. In the meantime, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I got to go pee. <coughs> hmm. I think it's time for me to retire, Francis. Thank you. Good evening, Hoyt. Right. Colonel. Small thing, Governor, if you don't mind. Uh, good night, gentlemen. Tomorrow. Good night. Hi, Governor. <clears throat> Your ballot wants to see you. <laughs> no, not with the trial coming up. Well, if he feels wrong, sir, he does own a lot of land. Just a, a word, sir. He ain't gonna plead his case. Just a word, a moment, no more, Governor. Show him in. Yes, sir. Mr. Ballard, the Governor will see you now. Sir, this is, uh, Henry Ballard. Mr. Ballard, what the hell is going on here? You got a murder running loose in Cheyenne, free as a jaybird. I ain't done nothing, and I'm locked away in jail. Now, I'm one of the biggest cattlemen in this territory. I ain't getting no respect. I ain't getting no protection. Now, you're talking about statehood with this tin horn shanty, ain't worth a shit city? To hell with that. Where's my protection? Where is the army? We don't have an army. What? The army we have is on escort duty, protecting the folks from Washington coming here to take this tin horn shanty, ain't worth a shit city, and turn it into the capital of the state of Wyoming. Under the circumstances, you can hightail it out of town and take your chances on the road, which would suit me fine. Or you can cool your ass in jail until things blow over. Either way... Get! Yeah. Conrad? Well, that wraps up a good productive day. He can't just go in somebody's house and burn down their barn. He can't just ride up and shoot somebody's wife. Well, what, where's the army? That's what I want to know. Where's the army? He just going around. He need to be stopped.
Billy wants to know how the trial is going. Judge ain't decided yet. How is it for you? It's bad for us. If we get caught, they'll hang us. Billy wants to know if you will join us. I'm keeping after Ballard. I better spell it out for him. Judge, how does this affect the amnesty? I don't know how it will go with me, but if I lose, God willing, I have the strength to continue my fight. And with your help and friendship, I will. If Redding wrote this, it means he intends to break his part of the agreement and continue his fight with Ballard. He can revoke the amnesty. I say we arrest him and announce it to the crowd. That'll be the end of it. There's a trial coming up, Mr. Metcalf, in which you, as chief legal officer of this territory, will have to consider all of the facts, including murder and armed insurrection, and not just part of it. That will be the end of it. Sir, somebody owes you an apology. move first. I seen it with my two eyes. Billy stalked Slater with a knife while Slater was on the ground. Redding watching all the time, he didn't say a word. Didn't say, hold on, Billy Redwood, what, what, what are you going to do? What are you up to? See, Redding knew that it was Slater who beat up the Indian. It was Slater who got in the fight with Woody on the day that Redding's wife was killed. So when Slater moved to defend himself, Merle shot him dead. It's premeditated murder. They come riding up of a sudden. The engine out front. And, well, I winged the crow pretty good, and then, and for no reason, Redding started firing. And then Daisy, she, uh, God have mercy on her. She, uh, she heard the shooting, and then, she came running out to protect me. And, and then and that, that man, that man shot her. I didn't know nothing about a quarrel. All I know is Daisy and me had nothing to do with it. And now she's gone. I'm sorry for your wife, but you're a liar. Mr. Redding, I have here in my hand a letter which may seem familiar to you. Did you write this letter to Billy Redwood? Yes, I did. Would you do me the favor, sir, please, of reading it aloud to the jury? If you like. Dear Billy, I'm sorry I got you into this. It doesn't look good for you. The judge says you have no claim because you didn't show up. I don't know how it will go with me, but if I lose, God willing, I have the strength to continue my fight. And with your help and friendship, I will. With your help and friendship, I will. Will what? 
continue to burn people's barns and property, continue to murder innocent people? Is that what you're saying? No. That's not what I mean. I said I will continue the fight against Ballard, and I will. But I didn't say how. And I never said I'd done everything right. And I take responsibility for that. But Grady is lying when he says I killed his wife. And the sheriff is lying about how I killed Slater. I didn't go looking to kill anybody. It's justice I'm looking for, and it's justice I'll get. I'll track it as long as I'm breathing. And even if it cost me my life. Hear ye, hear ye. The court of the territory of Wyoming is now in session. The Honorable Joe B. Tolliver presiding. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Thank you, Miss Hayden. Merle Redding, please rise. Mr. Foreman. On the charge of killing Slater Morrison, we find the defendant, Merle Redden, not guilty. On the charge of two counts of armed insurrection and the killing of Daisy Mathis, we find the defendant, Merle Redden, guilty as charged. <laughs> Order. Thank you, Mr. Foreman. Merle Redding, Henry Ballard, please approach the bench. <laughs> we got him. I told you we'd get him. How you like this justice, boy? Wipe that smile off your face, Mr. Ballard. This is serious business. You first, Mr. Ballard. A petition of grievance against you by Mr. Redding has been upheld. You are to, with your own hands, restore the health and good condition of the two horses left in your care by Merle Redding. Further, in your testimony to this court, you lied when you described the condition of the horses as sway-backed old bones. Nothing could be further from the truth as testified by those who knew the value of the horses. Lying under oath is a serious offense. I therefore sentence you to two years in jail for perjury, three months of which will be spent working in Merle Redding's stables. Get your hands Order! Off me. Merle Redding, you have been found guilty of armed insurrection and murder. Do you have anything to say before this court passes judgment upon you? I took the law into my own hands. I did it because there was none in Rollins. I wrote my own law, but I didn't create it. I used what was there all along. In my mind, that law was there before we were born. I am sorry for Daisy Mathis when we rode off we never knew she'd been shot. For my part in it, I beg her husband's forgiveness. I'm a horse trader, Your Honor. All I was doing was taking my horses to market. That's it. You wanted justice. You got justice coming to you. Ready! The horses misused by Henry Ballard will be restored to their former condition and to your satisfaction. Following that, hey. it is the sentence of this court that you be taken to a place of execution and hanged by the neck until you are dead.
mercy on your soul. Court is adjourned. Die, you son of a bitch! Die! be with you. You're just gonna have to make it on your own for a while. Why are they doing this to you, Paul? Two people died, me chasing Ballard. Somebody's gotta pay. But why? You didn't kill nobody. I killed Slater, all right, but I didn't kill Daisy. It's important to me that you know I didn't. Her husband must have shot her by mistake. But I caused it. Did you see the horses? How do they look? Great. You promise me something, son? Sure, Bob. Don't ever sell. I'll never sell them. Never. They're the best two you and Billy ever raised. A lot of pride in those stallions. Come from a great line you can build on. So how much money you got in the bank? Two hundred dollars. Well, you got the rest of the money Shelby owes. He's a good man. You can trust him. He'll take good care of you. Shelby says that there's we could bust out. There's a lot of folks in town, and they're talking Age. about. No. It's time to put an end to it. There's, there's still time. We could do it again. Cage. They'd find me sooner or later. I don't want any more killing in my name. Do you understand? Now listen to me. Somebody steps on your rights. Go after him. Never give up. Never. Just be smarter than I was. All right. Come on, let's go look at the horses. <laughs> Mr. Redding, here are your horses. Wouldn't you say, Judge? You want them? You got them. Hey, you burning hell! You son of a bitch! You got nothing for me! You did what I said you'd do. You got nothing! 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 That's all you got, bitch! Nothing! I get what he
cigar. Oh, I worry about you and me, Judge Wilkins. I swear to God I do. Because if this country gets ruined, it'll be ruined by people like you and me. This is a territory of unimportant people. Most folks around here can't even write their name. <laughs> you and me, we're the important people. Trouble is, there's not enough of us important people to go around. We're spread thin. So sometimes important things get ignored or don't get said. Like, take care of the little feller. See to it that he don't get ignored or cheated or insulted. Make sure that his dignity does not get trampled on. Now, you're feeling bad right now, and by God, you ought to. Seeing as what just happened to a decent man. Merle Redding did not fail the law. The law failed Merle. <clears throat> just so you'll know who's behind it, this is a copy of a letter that I wrote to the governor asking that a committee be called to evaluate your fitness as a sitting judge. It is my earnest hope and desire that that committee finds you wanting and that articles of impeachment be drawn to remove you from the bench. I'm doing this out in the open. Everything's on the table, up and up, so you'll know who the son bitch is that is gunning for your ass. It's me, the Honorable Joe B. Tolliver. We'll close, Judge. Out of respect for the condemned man. If you, Judge, I'm willing to make an exception. Ten bucks a shot. If you got a permit. Got to have a permit, Judge. I'm sorry for the pain I caused. But to help me God, I could not have done otherwise. In my heart, I'm just. Let's do it. Created the moon to count months. The sun knows when it must set. The truth is subtle, his law complete, his justice absolute. Let my words be rooted in honesty, and my thoughts be lost in your light, unnameable God. My essence, my origin, my lifeblood.
my home.